So this will be number eight on this sort of digestion that we have or I have about these cool ass DJs and producers and how they're killing and rocking the scene. Uh, so by far, this is the most hype one probably and for this rendition on the look i'll say sara landry so i really wanted to make this video uh, a little time ago but she exploded like crazy and i have never seen like a dj career go so up and just never stop you know was interested that she was evolving in industrial techno to be honest and then i went to this sort of psychedelic and acid sort of uh let's say journey on um, exploring certain genres of techno that were sort of lost i think and invested my time there and sort of lost focus from her you know but back in the day i remember like she was this dj from the us man with anger wanted to play her music as hard as loud as possible you know and when they gave her finally the spot on the first gigs that she got in Europe man people were like excited because she was young uh, she was like like this beast you know on the decks you know this immaculate energy and I, it hit it hard you know like I think that that part of techno was not so popular on Instagram at the moment or was not trending. So people started looking at her like, this chick is crazy, man. She's bringing back like hard techno, all that shit. So, and um, yeah, sort of a hype grew around her. And that's when I sort of disconnected, I remember, and then reconnected again, sort of see what was happening with techno scene, what was happening with Tara and wow sort of the comparison from there to now you know in my we'll say in my perspective you, there's no dj in the face of this earth right now that has that stage presence that sala laundry has now and that's just a brief comparison and for the ones who don't know you know these women in little words little words you can go and see the information is out there so you can see them but uh in to my own perspective I've, i will have just to give you a brief thing about her uh let's say her career you know she's this girl you know from texas and had a corporate job and fell in love you know with with music creative and sort of in that fight of balancing a nine to five and trying to become a dj and just that point where it just breaks you and it throws you to the ground you know and you're basically by the dust there man like the song of queen <laughs> you know society just puts that foot on you and anger and disappointment just enters into you and that's the point where you say look no man i'm gonna quit here she quit her her job she's a programmer and also she's someone that has been someone that has cultivated her mind in a lot of different would say or not different but uh sort of different artistic as well journeys and because she's part of other communities as well so this is not someone that just is a robot working corporate is just someone that's really artistic you know and you know college happens you graduate and this and that and all of a sudden you want to dedicate yourself to art and it's a really hard thing to do and something that was moving to me is that she revealed uh that she didn't have any sort of basic knowledge on music so i was like wow man this chick is impressive you know because let me tell you when you know music and you know uh, a music instrument or you know how to sing or whatever you have your sort of fundamentals once you go into techno or djing you know that eventually you will be able to connect all these points you know that you have and connect it perfectly you just need to learn that vocabulary of how you want to present your music depending if it's a deck a live rig whatever you want to put in there sort of when you start connecting the points and 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 sort of start communicating better um you realize that you just have an upper hand 
you know, on these DJs that they don't have no musical knowledge and they throw themselves there, man. They're confident. They know if they or develop an organized way or develop their own philosophy, you know, within music and art, they know they will drive through it. And uh, but it's not always easy believing in what you're doing in the sense of, as I tell you, my complete admiration for her. Uh, I am the times she must has felt really frustrated, you know, someone that always not only wants to do things perfect and right, but uh, wants to do things that have purpose and intent within the community. So you got to understand why she's so vocal and why she has her points of view. It's because she loves the scene and she wants the scene to be better. And so she will always take that right decision, you know. Um, I'm always interested in what she has to say as well and yeah just to not get too much in deep that uh if i could say as a dj that's what i want to talk about today not sort of as a producer in this sense or sort of a personality on you know on the techno world aside from that just a dj you know that's the thing like sala laundry is no longer a genre or is no longer hard techno or techno this or techno that or techno your grandmother man it's her show you know uh it's like you're going to a circus but one of those circus of the old movies of pinocchio you know <laughs> it's just a crazy mad circus man you're paying to go and see like a monster truck show or something like that it's something that's huge that's meaningful to the culture that has relevancy as well but also is heavily rooted in the true heart of techno you know so that happens when someone that just has really uh, you know honest and really good intent within music and that's proportional to their hard work that's why they usually end up transmitting you know uh so sort of that confidence in, in a DJ that has a perfect infrastructure as well. So you go into a show, the lights, how she has pushed a lot of things. That's why I love her as a DJ. She pushes a lot of things, you know, on with the lights, with the sound. And if you're damaging the audience ears as well, you know, she's someone that she knows what she's doing and just appreciating also the platform that she has brought you know that she has her own school of you know mixing and creating music in ableton well her own record label hitaki i don't know how it's pronounced but uh it's sort of starting so uh go and check her as well you know i hope they sign some crazy artists in the future as well and yes sort of see what she's gonna do you know with the scene basically I wanna see all the shows with the lights. Everything Sana Laundry does is for you can enjoy a, a better show, man. She really is one of those DJs that really thinks about everything. And as far as pride I can take on being saying I'm a DJ, sometimes I overlook a lot of things. I will say sometimes I'm focused and just wait stuff, you know, within the set. And there's people that they think on everything, you know. So it's really important that we have people like that in the community and people that know they're going to get criticized and hate, but they don't care, man. Um, they are past beyond that because they have found this sort of, you know, um, I will say home in the community. And yes, I just love uh, Sala Laundry and man, those sets, those sets are crazy. So can we first uh talk about the boiler room set man it looks like everything was staged there the outfits of the people everyone was goth night mode and the woman just went there and rocked that place out uh so basically yeah that woman went and evangelized Say that the first half of that boiler room is just you know like its own entire genre and this is what i like about her is like she's all this she's all that but putting everything aside man like as a dj she just kills those sets man everything is so good so well put out there and she creates like this bubble around her set like you're in good hands bubble that's just a set that hits hard but is so well treated you know i'll say like her sets are well treated and everything is just works in harmony you know and uh i'll say like it's not easy 
to to exhibit harmony on your sets all the time because it's a complex topic you know when we speak creatively you know uh i will say that that's uh, the word that i will describe sana laundry is just harmony and uh you can have a lot of good things that work and might connect and uh you know but when we speak about harmony we speak about that the elements that you have are not just good but that they coexist in an environment that's why it's harmony right because they sort of um sort of behave between each other you know they sort of live feed of each other that's harmony in its sense you know um and you know his mix her mixes are really fast and are really hard pumping and everything but nothing ever feels out of place in her sets i always feel hypnotized i have seen that her sets every time they sort of go through that sort of vision that she has but as well they have a lot of their diversification sometimes she just has fun and i love it i love it check the set of 2022 on me i don't know if that's pronounced that way but you know amsterdam that amsterdam crowd i don't know what they have but it's always on point and I will recommend the two sets as well on Vergnip. The two, the first one on 2023. And then she did uh, another one in 2023. And those back to back are, those sets are just brutal, brutal. And now I sort of wanna cut this part of the video and sort of talk more deeply on certain stuff. So I do feel like that part is just maybe the part that I don't know if someone might enjoy or not, but you know, just the main message is go and check her out. Badass, great story. We all love her and she's doing great things for the community. And now uh, if we speak more deeply, man, I, we can speak a lot of stuff about someone that's so renounced. But you know, um, what topic should I get or what should I feel? Sort of say something that I don't feel like people are sort of maybe not not a light has been shone but you know it's really important that we have someone like that in industrial because you know industrial is a word that i feel we use to sort of identify globally with a sort of deep feeling or sentiment you know um because it's a funny word to use really it's just this word uh industrial metal or i listen to industrial techno for me, it's just always when someone says that word, I just laugh, man. <laughs> but it's the word that we used to define that genre, right? But industrial, you know, is that sort of why it's always that heavy, why it's always that obscure, why it's uh, always... Or, or everything that people sort of that back in the day, earlier th 2000s, you know, or even that the gap in 2008 where industrial start getting a lot of stuff you know attention from the underground communities and the the that term has been sort of shaped with the years but you know in my perspective i will say like industrial are all those people like that like let's say like we like that are people that have a conflict in in, in sort of their their being you know that means in myself that means that you have you love society but you have been hurt by society meaning that you love society maybe you love the metropolitan life maybe you have a, a you know you're in college you're in love you have a girlfriend or you have a really good group of friends or you had a really good job and you have things going for you so you start giving pleasures to yourself like eating expensive food you know maybe buying an expensive car getting a loan and getting your own apartment you start giving yourself these things and sort of loving you know the the city life that you sort of feel you you're giving yourself but as well you know at the same time society hurts you all the time depending on the place that you live society will always find its way sort of letting you down you know uh i sort of feel like there's some people that experience that violence at work you know the corporate environment can be visceral sometimes and um sometimes uh it's the government sometimes even wars or you know that the word the world right now is going nuts everywhere so sometimes it's like uh, i do see like even in certain countries society is such 
um, this burden, you know, like people at their young age taking like harsh decisions, you know, on their life. And I'm like, nah, man, like life has a lot of things to, you know, it's not always easy, but it has, you know, a lot of things that you can chase and find purpose and sort of find yourself to get up. But, you know, sometimes it just hurts you and you don't want anything because that sort of conflict, you know, it's the representation of that love for industrial, you know. That's why it's so fast because it represents our lives in society. If you sort of live in a metropolitan or an urbanized city, you know, everyone doesn't have time for anyone. No one has time for relationships, to talk to you on the park, and nobody has time for anything. We eat, we go to work, then we go to practice a sport or we go and play a video game and then we play another video game and then we go and eat out and then we sort of dedicate time to a special someone or a hobby that we have and we don't have time for anything. We see 16 TikToks every 14 seconds. We see a movie, we're bored of it. We want to know what's the next big deal and everything is so seasonal in the year. That's why people feel that time goes so fast, but you know, um i just feel like basically a representation you know that techno is a representation of how fast we live our lives that that's why it's violent and it, that's why it's you know it has these sinister undertones you know and you know it, it's a representation of how you feel in society you you you, you want to dance you want to break out you want violence you know our laundry amongst the djs really can capture that feeling you know that getting to to that sort of organic and natural sort of feel of of that music that we sort of wants us to represent us to represent us you know i think that sometimes we're just tired of the same old hippie stuff and we just want to rebel you know and we have a fair share already of house and beautiful techno that represents life hopefulness party dancing but you know, I sort of feel like techno is moving to a more, to more edgier, yet more serious as well. Spectrum. I do feel like she's the perfect example of hard work and sacrifice. And uh, yes, uh, what an example. In that you know, we have people here on this continent like Moshak, like Avalon, and most likely my girl Sala Laundry. What a pride, you know. What a pride. Uh, I do feel like one day, unfortunately, there's big names that people say about DJs will be slowly fading, you know, with the generations to come. And one day, I'll just see the name of that woman, you know, big Sarah Laundry, you know. Now everybody will know what that who that woman is and what she represents. So on the look, Sarah Laundry.